Hello and welcome everybody. Do you enjoy smashing your shield into other people's faces and going balls to the walls against the biggest guys on the battlefield? Well, I got you covered with the unstoppable knight that lives by only one coat. Eat my steel and heal me up. And if you happen to like what you see, subscribing, liking and leaving a comment would tremendously support this channel. But let's dive right into it. The central idea of this build is to create a hard-hitting, poise-breaking, toe-to-toe going knight that is nearly invulnerable during shield attacks, while also landing devastating hits with a great axe when enemies are getting back on their feet and having the ability to heal easily back up with strikes that will break down even big enemies. The main items we are utilizing here is a great shield of your choice with at least 75 guard boost a great axe with good reach and high base damage and the Ashes of War Shield Crash and Prayerful Strike. And no worries, this is a pure strength build. No faith investment, no buffing or incantations necessary. Your central attack is Shield Crash, which hits hard, breaks poise and throws down enemies, giving you plenty of time to either follow up with a charged R2 attack or quickly two-handing your great axe and crushing enemy skulls with prayerful strike while bringing you back to full health in no time. Shield Crash gives you four powerful abilities baked into one attack. Firstly, as soon as your shield connects with the ground, you are invulnerable to physical damage as long as your stamina does not deplete. This is directly tied to your guard boost. The higher, the less stamina is chipped away by an enemy attack. Secondly, the attack itself hits hard. This is by no means a defensive Ash of War. It deals superb damage for low FP costs and scales with strength. Thirdly, the attack delivers a truckload of poise damage, thus enabling you to even break poise of bosses within one or two attacks. And lastly, if the last swing connects, most enemies will fall down and have to get back up leaving them open to huge attacks. Prayerful Strike, set to the Strength Affinity, hits hard and also delivers big poise damage. It grants you hyper armor during the attack, so you can tank through all but the biggest enemy attacks. It heals you for 30% of your maximum health, making it a percentage-based heal that stays viable throughout the whole game. You essentially have two basic playstyles you can switch up by simply two-handing your great axe or not. With shield crash, strong and decently fast block counters, with good reach and heavy R2s after a successfully executed shield crash on one hand, or a two-handed great axe for hard and somewhat fast attacks and face tanking most enemies with prayerful strike on the other hand. Switching back and forth between these two on the fly and mixing it up with prayerful strikes if needed after a shield crash is a tremendously satisfying playstyle. My preferred shield and great axe for this build are the Eclipse Crest Great Shield, which is the lightest great shield that provides 75 guard boost and a high magic resistance. It also looks dope, grants a flat 50 points boost in immunity, robustness and focus, but might be a bit painful to farm. A super early alternative is the Mana Tower Shield that weighs 1 kg more, has the same guard boost and a minimal higher base damage. Later you might want to switch to the Dragon Tower Shield, but the stat differences are minor and more weight forces you to spend more points on endurance. The Long Heft Axe has minimal stat requirements and can also be obtained very early in the game. It has a nice moveset, high base damage and exceptional reach. The Crescent Moon Axe is a nice alternative if you want a different moveset, but it forces you to spend some points in dexterity you could spend elsewhere otherwise. The Great Axe has the highest base damage of all Great Axes and can be obtained easily very early, but it has very short reach which is bad for your block counters and prayerful strike, letting you miss more often. For the armor, you can use the lightest setup to reach 51 poise and keep medium rolling to avoid the occasional grab attacks. I use the Caden armor and helmet with the scaled gauntlets and greaves. This setup lets you tank normal attacks for days behind your shield. 
and even hard hitting enemies will have trouble to break through your guard boost. Shield Grease is very effective for boss encounters when you want to tank through magic or elemental damage and even harder hitting attacks. You literally become a walking fortress that only has to watch out for grab attacks. You can make this build work pretty early, but it requires some stat investment to really shine. Stats at level 150 are as follows. Vigor at 50, which I can't reach here because of my not ideal starting class. But with a wretch or hero or other classes, you can easily get to 50. 22 mind gives you plenty of FP to use shield crash and prayerful strike frequently. You might want to push it even to 25. 36 endurance is needed for a medium roll with this setup. Remember, you have to spend more points here if you use a heavier shield or axe. 80 strength for maximum damage and the other stats don't matter at all. A different weapon might force you to spend more points in dexterity though. For talismans we have the curved sword talisman to boost our guard counters, the great shield talisman to improve our guard boost, which is very important in this build, shard of alexander for increased ash of war damage and the ritual sword talisman for more overall damage. And with prayerful strike we are always able to heal back up and convert FP into health. If you encounter bosses that are not ideal for guard counters, then switch the curved sword talisman for a defense option like the dragon crest great shield talisman or some additional resistances like fire against Rikard and so on. You are pretty flexible with your flask of wondrous physics. I often use the stone bar crack tier for additional stance break against bosses and the Crimson Burst Crystal tier to keep my Ritual Sword Talisman buff up easily. But stamina boosting or damage negating setups are also very viable. Overall, this build is very effective and I rarely had a more satisfying Elden Ring experience than face tanking stuff with Prayerful Strike or utilizing a Great Shield to its maximum potential. And it even is a very solid mid game option. But what do you think about this build? Let me know in the comments and what builds would you like to see covered in the future. For now, that's all about Elden Ring. Take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.